This simple spreadsheet that I'm about to share with you easily would have saved me over $100,000 during my career doing over $25 million in e-commerce sales. So the backstory for this is that this guy a couple of years ago thought that he was all that and then some, you know, young, dumb, making a lot of sales just on top of the world. But he was honestly about to get the biggest kick in the teeth that he'd ever had in his entire life. And I'm going to knock your teeth so far down your throat, you're going to stick a toothbrush right up your ass to brush them. Because while e-commerce sales were shooting through the roof and cash was hitting the bank account, at least it looked like that, he wasn't tracking any of his financials, literally not one. <laughs> Like he would open his bank account occasionally, see what was in there. And so we were just generating a lot of sales. We were having a lot of success. Honestly, got very lucky a lot of times. We were not organized or disciplined in tracking our financials at all. The reason I'm making this video is that I see so many people, extremely intelligent, like well-educated and like successful people that are making this exact same mistake that was so painful that I just want to help avoid it because it can literally be resolved in just five minutes a day. And so in this case, we generated a ton of sales very quickly over a million dollars in sales within just a couple of weeks we thought you know we're good like this is awesome because we had a ton of cash hitting the account and numbers were going up but the fallacy or misbelief that we had was that cash hitting the account was equal to our profit our bottom line and nothing could be further from the truth because obviously there's a ton of expenses that need to be taken out of that now we knew that but in our minds we were just ballparking like oh i'm at 20 30 percent net profit so like 100k hits the account 20 to 30k is gonna be sticking around that's ours so we would just start spending as if that was the actual bottom line that we had but then in the ensuing weeks and months what happened after that completely kicked us on our ass because in that particular case we had supply chain issues we had issues with the team we just had a lot of different expenses that were racking up that again if we had been tracking this it would have been a non-issue but we were just running and gunning and just going off of like finger in the wind type of metrics and had no real idea of how much money business actually had like what was the actual cash flow left over after all expenses we didn't really have an idea and the way that we found out that this was actually an issue was when our bank account a few months down the road just started dwindling down to like pretty concerning level and we're like whoa what's going on oh my god okay it's happening everybody stay calm what's the everybody procedure stay calm. everyone like we made all these sales we had all this revenue coming in i know we had some expenses but there should be a lot left over and that's when we finally sat down and like really looked at our expenses and looked at item by item what we were paying and we were absolutely caught off guard by how much the expenses were that we were racking up i'm talking about like our supply chain was costing two to three times as much as we thought our team we had about 15 extra people hired that we didn't really need to have we weren't watching the expenses so our overhead was like 10 to 15 percent of our total sales like insane especially for an e-commerce business like it should be nowhere close to that like with a virtual team you don't have any offices like your overhead should be three to four percent and it was at this point that as our stomachs were sinking that we realized we need to sort this out and finally get our finances organized so i went over to google and i typed in how to run a pnl and what i found was that it's honestly very simple just very few people actually do it not only do they not do it they don't do it consistently enough and so when i finally filled out the pnl i realized that the number that we thought was going to be left over in the bank account was actually completely off after all expenses that we were expecting had settled we were going to be at a negative so just think about that millions in sales we had done such a poor job of tracking our expenses that we were going to be at a deficit and the reason that that lack of tracking was going to lead to a deficit was because when you're not tracking the expenses you have no idea like what they actually are so therefore you can't mitigate them you can't cut expenses you can't help maintain your profitability it's like the tony robbins saying what gets measured gets grown or gets improved a hermosi one is like if you don't measure it then you don't care genuinely like at the time we were violating both of those so if you're watching this please comment down below if you have never run your financials so we can normalize talking about it because it's not a sexy subject it's not fun but it is one of the most important important things that we can do in our business. Like it is the most profitable five minutes of every day for me. And me saying this is not something revolutionary, but what we are going to do in just a minute is go through the exact templates that you can copy down below and how you can fill them out. And I highly, highly recommend doing this on a daily basis. So many of the students in our community, they talk about like, I, I push them like, please run your PL, run your financials. I know that it's scary at first. You don't want to rip off the bandaid, but just do it and you will thank me later. And it's that kind of thought process of just like, if I don't look at it and it's not there it's still there the only way to fix it is to face it head on and me saying this is nothing revolutionary this is well-known business practice warren buffett is quoted saying accounting is the language of a business Jamie Dimon of JP Morgan Chase is quoted as saying, it is absolutely critical that we manage our business with discipline and maintain a fortress balance sheet. And lastly, Uncle Jeff, Jeff Bezos is quoted as saying, 
If you don't understand the details of your business, then you are going to fail. And with all these quotes from massive Fortune 500 companies, is there a more important or bigger lesson that us as small business owners are able to take away from this? To me, the answer is yes. And that lesson is the discipline of running your financials, although it's not sexy, doesn't get a lot of airtime, it is so important. Not just making sure that you maintain profitability, but also keeping to a finger to the pulse of your entire business. And part of the reason that I fell into the trap early on of of not running financials was because I just loved running the ads so much, which is great. Cool to love an area of the business. That's awesome. But it becomes a detriment to the business when that is all that you put your focus into. And you convince yourself that your hammer of a tool is able to solve all problems in the business. And that's just simply not the case. And so as entrepreneurs and business owners, we have to be wearing all the hats and maintaining consistency across all areas of the business, even the areas, or especially the areas that we don't enjoy the most. Now, as promised, let's take a look at our PL template. And this is a template that is linked down below. You can get it completely for free. Just Promise me that you will please use it. And the way that this works, PLs are very simple. PL stands for profit and loss statement. And all that it basically is, is an account of all of the income that you have in the business minus all the expenses equals the amount that is left over. So in our business, e commerce business, Shopify, uh, print on demand with Facebook ads, like those are our big expenses, but we keep track of it on this spreadsheet. And the other important thing you'll notice is that it is run on a daily basis. So it needs to be run daily because if we're not running it daily, then things are going to happen like from week to week. And I did this. I used to just, after I learned the hard lesson, I was like, all right, just running it once a month. That's good enough. It's not good enough because by the time 30 days has rolled around, a lot has changed. So notice first that it is run on a daily basis. Please make sure to do the same. It literally takes five minutes and you're about to see how. So the way that we can find our Shopify gross sales and Shopify shipping is by going to analytics, analytics, and then clicking total sales, and then going to whatever the date range is, break down by daily, no comparison. And so gross sales, we want to grab this number right here. So 2544. And then we also grab the shipping, the returns, and the discounts. And we plug each of those numbers in their corresponding spot. Then we have our cost to fulfill, which we use Printify. So this will be a different name for whoever you're using, whether if you're using Printful, Gelato, AutoDS, whichever one you're using, you're going to enter the total amount that you were charged for the orders of that day. We set it up so we get billed once per day, which makes it super easy for us to track the total expenses rather than having to go like order by order. So we got charged $1,078 on that day. Then our discounts, there's the number that you saw um, from the spreadsheet or from the dashboard rather, $83 in discounts, $146 in refunds. Then Shopify and PayPal fees. This, uh, I just like putting in like a round number, like basically take total sales times 0.03. It's normally a pretty good estimate for each of these. Meg, my wife and business partner, she likes to wait and do it like on the actual, like calculate the actual amount that they took out to each their own. But basically this is just the amount that you pay for the transaction fees, which every, every company has that. It's like the credit card transaction fees. There's never gonna be a platform that doesn't have that because they have expenses to cover as well. And scrolling down further, now we get into our advertising expenses. So on this day, we spent $862 on Facebook ads and zero dollars on google ads our overhead expenses this accounts for all software team pretty much those two <laughs> but all of those expenses gets added up and then divided by 30. so if you take 133 times 30 it shows our overhead well it really throws off you know um our overhead right now is about 4k a month which that is very much a relative number to the revenue that you have in the business but the higher the revenue the higher the overhead can be but try to keep it around three to four percent ideally so you put that number in there and that one is just repeating across then and this is just all all of these are automated like automated formulas then so you don't have to update them uh, then it shows the profit margin then we've done a lot of volume with printify so we get a small rebate which helps out a little bit and then we also put all of our cost of goods on a 
two percent cash back card, which you can add that to the PL. I wouldn't like it's not truly part of the PL. Like any business that is interested in acquiring you will be looking at this number here. They won't be looking at your your they don't care about like your credit card rewards and little stuff like that. But all of that together, so then down here these automatically calculate. So our off Facebook ROAS for the day was 3.11, which we get that just by doing our total sales divided by our ad spend. And then our cost of goods is our printify charge divided by our total sales. And then overhead as a percentage of revenue is our general or overhead expenses divided by total sales. These are really important numbers to keep track of. And the ideal range for each of these is a three to four off Facebook ROAS cost of goods around 38 to 39% and overhead in the three to 4% range. And there's two different ways to decrease the overhead percentage, either A, increase sales or B, decrease overhead. I prefer the former, but those are the two options. So that's how to run the P&L very quickly. Just run it on a daily basis. And then the second spreadsheet or tab, same spreadsheet, but second tab you wanna be running is your balance sheet. And the difference between your P&L and your balance sheet is the P&L is showing all expenses, all, all income from that day minus all expenses, but then the balance sheet is what is actually in your accounts. So if we have 150 on the balance sheet plus $50 profit on that day, then in a perfect world, it should show $200 on the balance sheet the next day. Oftentimes it doesn't work out to be exact because there's you know settlement times like from when the the money's taken out to when it hits like transaction fees, but normally it's pretty close within like five to 10% ish. As long as you're in that range, then you're good. This is another one. I re highly recommend running it every day. And it took me a few months after I had that big fallout where I realized our finances are going to shit that you also need to run this. So the way that you run it is just make a list of every account that you have everywhere that you could possibly owe some money. So for us, that's uh, our credit card balances, Facebook, is a sneaky one that you have to track because Facebook doesn't just charge you every time a dollar spent, it accrues a certain balance. So that balance for us, it can go up to like $30,000 because they give us like an extra credit limit. But for the average account, it's like 900 bucks. So you still wanna make sure you keep track of that. And the way you can see this is by going to your business manager then going to billing and you can see outstanding amount. Same thing with Google ads, make sure that you see how much you have outstanding on Google. They bill every $500, I wanna say. Um, and then sales tax, if you're not collecting sales tax yet, don't worry about it. This is not financial advice, by the way, but you don't have to, basically Shopify will tell you once you have to start collecting sales tax. And then if you have an affiliate program, keeping track of the commissions that you have to pay out. Those are all the areas that like, I check this every day or Meg does when she runs it. Check this every single day to get a complete picture of what your expenses are or your accounts payable, then you want to do the same thing for accounts receivable. So look at your bank accounts, how much money is in transit from Shopify. So I'll show you what this looks like. So in Shopify, you go to finances and then payouts. You can see that the right now, or the last payment we received was for $1,348. Then our next payout is going to be for $795. Then our current balance is $3,656.99. And this column here is the transaction fees. This number, it took us a while to figure this out. This number includes that number. So we used to add, you know, 795 plus 3,600, and that would be our Shopify transit. This balance equals the, the total amount. So you would just take this right there. PayPal, it's the same thing as your checking account or as your Shopify transit, just see how much money is being held there. And in the beginning, if you have a brand new PayPal account, it's very possible they're gonna put like a 20 to 30% rolling reserve on your account. That's normal. We have the same thing and eventually it comes off. It's like three to six months, they take it off and then you can just disperse cash right away. Then we have our 2% cash back. So checking like whatever the reward balance is um, and 2% doesn't sound like a lot, but it honestly adds up pretty quick. The next is our WISE account. That's how we pay out our team. And so that's just another account to keep track of how much money is in there. And then if we've deposited any cash into our Printify wallet for payments, basically it's just keeping track of all of our current assets, all of our current liabilities. Some businesses, they would have like real estate and like hard goods on their balance sheet. We don't have any of that. 
obviously it's a virtual company, but it's relatively simple spreadsheets to run, but just run them on a daily basis and face the fact that it's probably going to be a red number in the beginning and that's okay. Measure it every single day and it will start to grow over time. And if you want to see an even more detailed breakdown of how we run our finances, check out the 21 hour free course it's all on YouTube. You can jump to the finance section by going to description with the timestamps. And thank you guys for watching. Please comment down below if you want to see more in-depth videos like this or different topics. Let me know. Appreciate you guys for watching and I'll talk to you soon.